Hello there, what is going on everyone? Today we are going to be talking about the Bad Batch Season 3 trailer that just came out yesterday. Uh, there's a lot to talk about with this trailer. I want to focus on canon and the big thing everybody's talking about. If you haven't already seen the Bad Batch Season 3 trailer, go check it out. We're going to talk about this trailer. We're also going to be talking about canon uh, books and if Disney's breaking canon and what they've kind of said about this and, uh, and some of my thoughts on it because... There's certain things that I'm a little worried about, but I also have some theories on how they're going to make it okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and just jump into the Bad Batch final season trailer. The most important, thing, there's lots of cameos, lots of surprises, Fennec Shand, Cad Bane, and more. Lots of really interesting stuff that you can see if you go through this whole trailer. It's, it's, it's a short trailer, but it's got a lot of goodies in it. Uh, and, and what I think is definitely the number one part of this whole trailer is towards the end we get Asajj Ventress's voice and then we see uh, Asajj with hair and a yellow lightsaber indicating that this is the Asajj Ventress we knew from the book Dark Disciple. This is a big deal. Uh, my initial reaction when I first saw this was like, oh my gosh, this is Asajj Ventress. This is so cool. I love Asajj. She's fantastic. Um, and I think the book Dark Disciple made me love her even more. She is just this is one of my favorite, like, in-between characters because she, she used to be, she she was once a Jedi or at least being, you know, trained as a Jedi and then kind of, uh, you know, her master got killed and Dooku took her as his apprentice and then she was evil and then she kind of said, you know what, I screw both of you guys, I'm going down the middle path and she's doing her own thing. So she's then she's a merc towards the Clone Wars uh, final seasons and we don't see anything else from her. And so people who've only seen the Clone Wars probably just said, oh, awesome, this is Asajj. Until all of a sudden, you know, after like the initial hype kind of faded down, I thought like, wait a second, when is this? This is in the Bad Batch. This is after after Empire Day, after the rise of the Empire. You know, this is, wait, she, there was, and it started to not make sense for me. And I started to worry that they were um, retconning a book that we all know and love. Well, that many of us may know and love called Dark Disciple. This was this cover art was the first time we saw Asajj with her long hair and the yellow lightsaber. Um, if you're not familiar with this book, it's a fantastic book. I definitely suggest you check it out. It's like probably my third favorite Star Wars book of all time. Um, it's it's written by Christy Golden, but it's based off of a Clone Wars episodes that were uh, done by Katie Lucas, George Lucas's daughter. This was like an un, unreleased Clone Wars story arc, all condensed into one book. Really well done book. Um, in summary, basically, uh, you know, Asajj Ventress as, you know, on her own, she's a merc. Uh, the Jedi want to, they'd resort to, hey, let's just try to assassinate Count Dooku and end this war. They say, hey, Quinlan Voss, we're going to send you to do it, but you need an in. We're going to send you to try to link up with Asajj Ventress. Maybe she knows a lot about Dooku. You guys can maybe talk her into teaming up. You guys go after him. All that good stuff. Um, they do it. They end up falling in love. Then they fail at killing Dooku. Uh, Quinlan Voss falls to the dark side. Uh, Asajj Ventress makes it out. She goes back after to rescue Voss from Dooku, and uh, like it's she ends up like pulling him out, kind of redeeming him, but getting uh, like mortally wounded in the process, and she dies. And Voss is then kind of like a, a fallen Jedi, redeemed, but but like a broken man. We know that uh, Quinlan Voss survived Order 66 because he's talked about in Kenobi. So Voss is still out there. Uh, we don't know what kind of path or story arc he's on, assuming he's still trying to do, you know, fight the good fight and trying to be a good, uh, a light side user now, having danced with the dark side, albeit briefly, um, the consequences were severe because he lost Asajj Ventress. But this all happened during the Clone Wars. Yoda was involved. They were trying to assassinate Dooku. Well, Dooku's dead in the time of Bad Batch. You know, the Clone War is over. Um, How is Asajj Ventress still alive? So my initial fears were, oh my gosh, they're, you know, with Ahsoka coming out, um, or rather the Clone Wars Season 7, they kind of changed a little bit of the Ahsoka book and and how the opening chapters of that Ahsoka book and how you know her fight with Maul went down and all of that not changed like completely but changed enough that it was like wait so are we changing canon here now a little bit and to me this is like well this is a massive change to canon 
And I, my first thoughts were, you know, at this point were, if they're changing these books, what's to stop them from changing these books, the the, the Thrawn books? Like, and, and granted, you don't necessarily have to have a connection between Asajj Ventress and Grand Admiral Thrawn, but or Mithron Nurodo, uh, but you do, you know, need to respect the books since they've come out since, you know, since you know the Legends universe went away and the new canon kind of became established. That was the whole point of kind of getting rid of Legends was that, hey, we're going to have a continuous, cohesive timeline. And if they're going to throw those books away, my fear is that they're going to just end up killing off Thrawn with the Ahsoka Season 2. That they're just going to say, all right, well, all the plans that they they laid for Thrawn are just going to be thrown out. We're never going to see the Grisk. We're never going to see uh, Chila. We're never going to see other Chiss. And all of that that we set up is just going in the trash can because we're going to throw out books. So I was initially very, very worried that that's something that they were doing. Uh, and so I want to kind of talk about that because that appears not to be the case. That appears not to be the case. And so, and, you, and I'm not trying to make it clickbait. I'm just walking you through my mindset of how all this happened. And then uh, my relief when I saw this blurb on uh, StarWars.com. If you go to StarWars.com, you can check this out too. Uh, there's the trailers leaked there. If you click details, it's going to take you to this page where they're talking all about uh, the trailer, uh, and there's some very interesting stuff. Um, they say the shocking appearance of Asajj Ventress. Uh, we love Asajj Ventress. She's a character that we've been wanting to tell more stories about. Brad Rao, supervising director and one of the executive producers of the series, tells StarWars.com. And he makes clear that her return will honor prior tales, including the book in which the character apparently perished. We don't want to spoil anything. But fans will, uh, but but we want fans to know that any new storytelling with Ventress will align with the events of Star Wars: Dark Disciple. So that's a lot to unpack. Now this is coming out February twenty first. I'm going to see, uh, and and all of the episodes uh, are posted here, so you can get the names for all of them. Um, it's unclear which episode Asajj comes back in, or if she even actually comes back. Now, they're, they're, and I, I say that to be to, to basically bring about the speculation. How are they going to bring Asajj Ventress back, considering that she died uh, years before this? And that's a really interesting question. Now, I think I figure there's a lot of different ways that they can do this. Um, the first one is probably a, a lot of people thinking about it because it's definitely a key part of the story for Bad Batch is cloning. It's possible, however, I don't feel like this is the most likely option, but it is possible that she could be a clone. Uh, it, you know, it would fit into the Mount Tantus storyline. It fits into the Empire's goals at this point. fits into, well, the Clone Wars, um, that, that possibly she could be a clone. If she is, it would be a big deal towards where the story's going with uh, kind of, you know, hearkening back to the Heir to the Empire trilogy about how the, like, the ultimate goal for Mount Tantus was to try to, or at least Sabaoth and Thrawn, you know, trying to use the Islamir to cancel out the Force, to be able to, to, be able to clone uh, Force users. Um, you know, it's, it's just this thing that happened, and, uh, you know, they made that clone of Luke Skywalker called Luke Skywalker. I wonder if she's not really Asajj Ventress, but she's Asajj Ventress, or something weird like that. Um, no, I don't think that that's really where they're going to do it, but that is one option. It's one of maybe three. Um, another option is that she didn't actually fully die. And, and this is a supported a little bit. I think this is a, maybe a, a more likely option, but it's maybe the most likely option. And then there's, there's a little bit more. So I want to go back. Let's go back to this blurb. Um, because they said, we'll honor prior tales, including the book in which the character apparently perished. Now, I read that book. It didn't seem like it was an uh, apparent perishing. She was dead. But I feel like that's telling that they're going to basically say, um, actually, she didn't really die in that book. That's what I think that they're going to say. Um, and they'll probably do some kind of flashback to it. If they do that, here's how I imagine it will go. Quinlan Voss had just been recovered, from, you know, uh, saved from Count Dooku and was like in mental collapse uh, after, you know, his dance with the dark side and, and kind of being ripped back to the light uh, and his feelings for Asajj and she's mortally wounded. She apparently dies and he's like, oh my gosh, the dark side had consequences. 
it could be that in Master Yoda's wisdom or, or, or Mace, maybe Mace Windu or maybe a decision was made to, to not tell Quinlan that she survived. Because don't forget, they've got, we might even see Grogu in here. Like, who know, he knows force healing, right? Um, my guess is that she was, they, they used force healing on her. Uh, she was basically dead, uh, and then at the last second, like, oh, a little green hand's like, actually, let's save her. And then Mace Windu's like, save her in the other room. We won't tell Voss that she made it. Um, reason being, he had to understand that there were consequences for turning to the dark side. He had to kind of go through that journey uh, for him to heal, because if she were just instantly saved, he might think, well, shoot, there were there were no consequences. You know, I can dance with the dark side anytime I want, and you know. So my guess is that's probably how they're going to do this. Another, a third option is it could involve Dathomir. It could involve witch magic. Uh, we know that there's magic still on Dathomir. She's not the only Night Sister. You know, you've got Marin from the from the Fallen Order games, um, Jedi Survivor, and stuff like that. So it's possible that there could be some Dathomiri witch magic going on. Maybe she's only raised for 24 hours or something like that. Um, or, or it's just, you know, some kind of, some kind of new Dathomirian witch magic. That is certainly a possibility, although I don't think that's actually the case. In fact, I believe, you know, there's a, a, a fairly decent chance of it being something Dathomirian because, uh, I seem to recall she was buried on Dathomir, so it's not like like oh you died and you were suddenly force healed like quite that quickly, uh, unless of course it was there was some kind of subterfuge involved, like they did heal her and then they put like a fake body to go uh, bury on Dathomir. Not sure, you know which of those they're going to go with. There is also like a fourth kind of option that she's actually not in the Bad Batch. She's actually not meeting up with them during this timeline, but rather the entire sequence is a flashback to uh, bef just before the time of Dark Disciple, when she had, you know, before Quinlan Vos went and found her. She, she was kind of, she wasn't evil, but she wasn't good. And that kind of matches with her, you know, her, her line there. It's like, I'm not trying to kill you, but you're, you know, you're working on changing my mind or whatever she says there. Um, so, that, I mean, there, there's a lot of different ways they can swing it. I'm leaning towards some kind of force heal or Dathomiri uh, magic to uh, reanimate her, so to speak. Um, she is a little a little shady in this, right? Like, if we look at some of these scenes, we're not seeing her very, very well lit. But at the same time, she doesn't look like she's a zombie, right? She doesn't look like that's going on. I mean, there's 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 tons of other theories that could be floating out there. Like the world between worlds, you know, Ahsoka's doing all this stuff. It's very dark in the background, too, when we see her. So this could be anywhere. It could be a flashback. I think they keep it dark on purpose to, you know, to not give you a whole lot of extra stuff. This also could be some kind of simulation. It could be some kind of holodeck training program. You know, holodecks are Star Trek, but, you know, you know what I'm saying. Um, there's, there's, there's a ton of possibilities. But it does seem like they're trying to allude to the fact that Asajj Ventress did not actually die in Dark Disciple. I want to hear from you guys. Let me know some of your theories. What is the wildest theory you have about how Asajj Ventress is actually appearing in this and how they're going to keep it consistent with existing stories? I want to know down in the comments below. Let me know. I want to hear some of your craziest and wildest theories. Um, also, I think it's good that they're honoring the books. If you're fans of Grand Admiral Thrawn, does this give you hope for the future of Thrawn in like Ahsoka Season 2 or any other movies that are going to come from that? Are we going to see an actual payoff to Thrawn's ultimate sacrifice of banishment and servitude in the Empire? Are we going to see Thrawn be able to go back and help the Chiss and help defend against the Grisk and everything that kind of was built up in the Thrawn books? There's six new Thrawn canon books since Disney took over and started a new timeline. If you guys haven't read them, they're actually fantastic. Timothy Zahn's an excellent author. Um, some of my favorite books ever. So you should definitely check those out. It's a pretty interesting time to be a Star Wars fan. February 21st, Bad Batch Season 3 is coming out. I want to hear some of your thoughts. I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Big thanks to my patrons. You guys are out of this world and help make this whole channel possible. I will talk to you later. May the Force be with you. Live long and prosper. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes, and always wash your socks.